Remember that party game when you were children? Kim's game, it was called. The one with all the random objects on a tray. You had to memorize as many as possible, and then it was covered with a cloth. Well, imagine we split this audience in two. We show you that tray, and we ask this half of you to leave by that door and to walk around Macclesfield Town Centre for an hour. And we ask this half of you to leave by that door and walk around Macclesfield Forest for an hour. Well, when we come back here, there's research that tells us that it's likely that those of you who've been walking around the natural environment will be able to remember more objects on that tray than those of you who've been walking around the urban environment. Which is incredible, isn't it? The thought that being outdoors in green spaces might actually help us to concentrate better, to think better. And there's a, a wealth of other evidence coming out that suggests loads of other benefits to our health and well-being from lowering your heart rate uh, to lower rates of depression. And about a decade ago, we thought we'd figured out something pretty important about nature too. I was at the Whitworth Art Gallery in Manchester with my boisterous children, seeing a really beautiful exhibition aimed at small people just like them. But they were running wild, climbing the walls, and I was holding them at my side and hissing at them, as usual. It wasn't an artistic or relaxing experience for anyone. But when we were outdoors, in green places, we all felt relaxed. And Sarah and I thought, surely there's a way that you can have those incredible goosebump moments that the very best art can create, but without being shoehorned into the restrictive spaces it was taking place in. We wanted to be seeing great art, but at the same time to be climbing trees whilst watching circus performance. So we set up the Just So Festival, a weekend camping festival for families, where they could sing and dance and play and create from dawn until dusk. We created a wonderland where they could play creatively, making meaningful family memories. And from the very start, we knew that needed to be outdoors, in those wild green spaces. And it worked. Families told us that they were having transformative experiences, that they were throwing off the shackles of everyday life and playing creatively and experiencing incredible arts and culture. And all of that was underpinned by that wild green landscape that they were immersed in. So we thought we'd nailed it. We'd recognised that engaging in the arts outdoors was easier for families. And in setting up the festival, we'd done something about it. We'd set up our social enterprise. So we merrily set about running our organisation. Someone was kind enough to offer us some free office space, so we took the really grown-up step of moving from our kitchen tables to a small office lockup behind a quick-fit repair garage in Macclesfield, which was a charmless place, I won't lie to you. There was no natural light. We threw as much bunting and fairy lights at it as we could, but it wasn't going to inspire anybody. But it was our office, and it was where we sat and did our work. We sat at our desks, we worked on our laptops, we filled in our spreadsheets and spoke on the phone. But at the same time, not in the office, we talked constantly on marathon training runs in the Cheshire countryside, on camping weekends in the woods. And that's where the ideas were coming from, the ambitions, the dreams. We were talking about all the stuff that was moving us on as an organisation, developing our sense of self. But despite that, we were still remained completely convinced that all the real graft was happening back in that office. And this took us to about six years ago, we had a couple of festivals under our belts and we were sitting in the office and Sarah was on the phone to a journalist. We take families on a journey of the imagination and we know this needs to be outdoors because we can see the effect this has on the audience. Those families relax more, they become more creative and being in wild green spaces makes us more open to new experiences, heightening our senses and making it seem like anything is possible. And so I'm sitting across the desk in this windowless office Sarah comes off the phone and I say to her, what are we doing in here then? We're not only convinced, but we're also trying to now convince other people of the incredible transformative benefits of being outdoors, but we're still working indoors. We know that it's helping us to think better, to be more creative. It's making us happier, but we're still trying to squash our work into this office environment. The penny dropped and we knew that we had to make being outdoors central to the way we worked. And so we didn't stop for a second and think, oh, how, co how come everybody doesn't work in the countryside? We, in our usual gung-ho fashion, went out, moved outdoors, lock, stock and barrel. 
Within six months, we were working in four acres of woodland in the Cheshire countryside. We bought a 1978 Bedford horse box with a wood-burning stove, and this became our main office. Initially, we were completely off-grid. We had a small generator for electricity and satellite broadband. We built ourselves some compost toilets and started to build a tree house because we needed somewhere to hold our board meetings after all. It wasn't like turning up to a normal office where you have to just switch the light on and just start work. There were all kinds of practicalities to start our day. Thoreau said, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, and this immediately rang true. From setting the fire to sometimes having to defrost the, the tap to fill the kettle, all these things force us to slow down, to take stock, to be deliberate. And we loved it. We moved in in the March, and by April, the bluebells were out. And by May, we were working in the meadow most days. And there was a huge and an immediate impact on our business, a shift in our ways of working. Our team of 12 were now having meetings around campfires or while on long walks through the hills. And that lack of four walls to constrain our thinking, it made us bolder and open to taking more risk. And saying to people, come and spend a day in the woods just comes naturally. Uh, meetings are completely different. They're exploratory. We are walking and talking and being with people in a way that just never felt possible indoors. There's an authenticity to the work that we do now and the stories we tell about it. And phone calls to journalists go more like this. We take families on a journey of the imagination. And we know this needs to be outdoors because it's what we live and breathe. We work outdoors year round and it makes us happier, healthier, more creative people. And so how come it took us four years to twig that we should be working outdoors? It was partly because it didn't feel like proper work. Um, and partly because it's a bit of a weird and out there thing to do. But why was that? People see nature as sometimes separate or other. Something that we know is good for us but to do on a Sunday walk as opposed to a Monday afternoon. The countryside is a place to escape to before we come back to the real world of bricks and mortar. And as well as that disconnect, there's a problem in perception of people who engage too deeply in nature. When we talk to people about the fact we work in a woodland, they make all kinds of immediate assumptions about who we are and what we must stand for. That we're super green, probably vegan, a little bit hippie, that our children are living this idyllic childhood, climbing trees and running through meadows. And while some of that is true to a point, we care about sustainability, even employ a vegetarian or two, Believe me when I say that our children are as addicted to their electronic devices as their peers. As a society, there are acceptable ways that we can live and work and be in nature. And outside of this, you're on the fringes. That's for the rebels, the radicals, the hippies and extremists. But we think that's a big problem because it means that people who do engage, who not, people generally think that a close connection to nature isn't for them. But as a society, we are starting to recognise the health and well-being benefits of spending time in nature. And forest schools and outdoor classrooms are becoming ever more popular. And there are even initiatives like the Natural Health Service, which is a consortium of councils, universities and wildlife organisations in the north of England who are coming together to discuss ways in which GPs might start prescribing time spent in nature. And maybe you're thinking it makes sense. They work in outdoor arts. They set up a camping festival. It's not that big a leap for them to move their outdoor work, move their working to an outdoor environment. So it's worth saying that of all the many, many arts professionals, organisations and festivals that we work with, we're the only ones we know who are working outdoors day to day. And why is that? Why aren't more of us working outdoors more often? Why aren't we in a woodland now having this talk? After all, that's where we think the big ideas are happening. And Isaac Newton wasn't sitting at his desk when that apple dropped from the tree. And Charles Darwin wasn't waiting in his office for the big ideas to come. He set sail to the Galapagos Islands. And actually, it should be easier than ever now. Modern technology has done an incredible job of liberating us from our desks and our offices. It enables us to take our devices and head off to the mountains, to the beaches, to the woods to work. And maybe you're thinking, well, it's easier for them, but I couldn't do that. I work for a large organisation. I can't change the location of my office. Or, or worrying about things like the weather or logistical issues like the transport problems in rural locations. And yes, there are definitely stumbling blocks. 
not everybody can move outdoors full time like we did and take their job to a field. Managing a high street bookshop, as I did for many years, couldn't have been done from the woods. But I could have taken our Wednesday morning staff meeting to the local park just a few minutes' walk away. So we need to talk about nature. As you might have figured out, we are pretty evangelical about it. We've been living and breathing this outdoor working life for five years now and just can't overstate the impact it's had on our outlook. But I think there's a, there are ways in which we can all uh, make being in green places a little bit more part of our everyday lives. Even the most urban of environments are often punctuated by patches of green wilderness within walking distance if we just stop and seek them out. But what can you do when you walk out of here today? So we've given each of you a nature strategy on your chair. Open your envelope. <laughs> See what you've got. And we challenge you to take action on it this week. Some of you will be asking for your next meeting in a green space. Some of you to head off into nature without a map and explore. Or maybe to write your to-do list from the branches of a tree. Making the move from a windowless office behind Quick Fit to a horse box in the woods has taken us on an incredible adventure. And yours might not take you any further than your local park, but be just as meaningful. But if anything we've said has resonated with you, what we really hope is that given the choice leaving here today, you wouldn't take that door to the town centre, but the door to the forest. Thank you. <laughs>